Now, let me talk about a very powerful tool called Failure Modes and Effects Analysis. This tool, FMEA, was first used by NASA to send the people on the moon. And they did not want to fail and that is why they used an FMEA, Failure Modes and Effects Analysis. Typically, FMEA is now used by almost all industries. Of course, after Apollo missions, it was used by Navy, then Defense Services, and later on by automobile companies, but now it is used in healthcare too. Typically, it is used in three situations, product or service design, process execution, or analysis of potential human errors. You can use this in analyze phase also, but right now we are learning FMEA in improve phase because we don't want to fail in implementing the solution. So as I told you, FMEA is a powerful tool. When you don't have data, in that case, you can always use an FMEA because FMEA also uses the data of the experience of the people. For that, you should have a multidisciplinary team. So never do an FMEA alone, use it with a team. For the purpose of identifying specific ways in which a product, process or service may fail, you can use an FMEA. You can also use an FMEA for developing countermeasures targeted at those specific failures that will improve the performance, quality, reliability, and safety. Many times, FMEA is also prefixed with some alphabets like DFMEA, PFMEA, HFMEA. If you are trying to design a new product or a service, then you use DFMEA, that is design FMEA. If you are trying to improve a process, then we use PFMEA, process FMEA. And if you are using it in healthcare, then it is known as HFMEA, healthcare FMEA. Before I take an example, FMEA can also be done at three levels in a process. It can be done on a process at a high level, or it can be done for all the process steps, imagining how each step will fail, or it can be also done on inputs, imagining how each input will fail. Before we take an example on process FME, that is PFME at a high level, let us understand the various columns of failure modes and effects analysis template. FME has got a lot of columns. The first column is about process or the process step or the input. So you have to mention the process which you are trying to improve or the process step or the inputs. And the next column is about failure modes. Imagine how this process will fail, how the process step will fail, or how the inputs will fail. You have to write how it will fail. You don't have to write the causes, why it is failing. So one of the common mistakes is that people start writing the causes of the failures. You don't have to write the causes here. Causes will be written in the causes column later on. After that, you have to look at the effects. So you have to write down the effects of these failure modes. After writing the effects, you have to give a severity rating to these effects. So you have to write on one to 10 scale, how severe, how badly it impacts the process or the outputs, how badly it impacts the customers. So if the effect is very, very severely impacting on the customer and the customer feels very unhappy about it, then the rating will be 10. And if the customer is not at all concerned about it, or if it has not got any impact on the output, then we will rate it as one. So one to 10 impact on the severity rating. Once we have written down the severity ratings of the effects, now again, it's time to focus on the failure modes. Now in the next column, you have to write the causes, all the potential causes which are responsible for that failure mode. So you have to write the causes for the failure mode. So again, some people commit this mistake, they start writing the causes of the effects. No, you have to write the causes for the failure modes. Why this failure is occurring? Once you write the causes of the failure modes, then after that, you have to write the occurrence rating. You have to give the occurrence rating to all the causes. If this particular cause occurs most of the time, every time, then the rating will be 10. And if this cause never happens, almost never you see this happening or there is no potential of happening that particular cause, then you will rate it as one. So one to 10 rating for occurrence. Once you have given the occurrence rating of one to 10, 10 means very bad, one means very good. 
Every time, see, we have got three ratings, severity, occurrence, and the next rating which is coming up is the detection rating. All the times, whenever it is good for the organization, the rating is one, and whenever it is bad for the organization, risk of failure is more, then the rating is 10. Once I've given the occurrence rating, then it's time to move on to the next column. The next column is about the current controls. What are the current controls? Now, again, one mistake people commit here is they start writing what could be the control, how to control that particular cause from happening. No, here we are writing the current controls. Are there any present control? Do you have in your organization some controls to prevent that particular cause or at least to detect that particular failure. If you have these current controls, you have to write these controls in this column. Once you have written the controls, then you have to rate these controls again on detection rating 1 to 10. You have to give a rating of 1 to 10. 10 means very bad control. 1 means very good control. Again, I repeat, 1 means good control. 10 means bad control. Again, often this mistake is committed by many people. They start writing 10 for good controls and 1 for bad controls. So don't commit that mistake. So we have got now three ratings, severity rating 1 to 10, then occurrence rating 1 to 10, and then detection rating 1 to 10. Now we multiply all the three ratings to get our risk priority number, RPN. Risk priority number is multiplication of severity rating, occurrence rating, and detection rating. Once we get our RPN, we look at those numbers and identify where is the highest risk of failure in our process? Naturally, we can do Pareto diagram here or Pareto analysis to identify the top 20% of the RPN so that I can prioritize my actions. And in the next column, you start writing the recommended actions for the high RPNs. Once you have written that, you can identify the person who would be responsible for implementing that action. And after you have implemented the action, you can recalculate the new RPNs. So this is how you do an FMEA. Now let us revise it one more time. What exactly we are doing in FMEA. So before we do an exercise on FMEA, let us once again see what do you do in FMEA. First, we brainstorm on potential failure modes ways in which the product service or process might fail. Write down the effect of failure mode and give the rating from 1 to 10 for the severity of the failure effect. Then we brainstorm on the potential causes and give them the occurrence rating from 1 to 10. 10 being the worst, 1 being the best. Brainstorm on the current controls and give them a detection rating from 1 to 10 again. 10 being the very bad control and which is of no use and 1 being the best control. Determining the risk of each failure mode, that means calculating the risk priority number RPN, which is a multiplication of severity occurrence and detection ratings. And finally, we identify the ways to reduce or eliminate risk associated with the high RPNs. To understand FMEA, let me take an example of a day-to-day -day process. For example, coming to office, this could be the process and I will write that in the process column. So process is coming to office. What is the failure mode? Now there could be many failure modes. One could be coming late to office. Second failure mode could be not going to office at all. Or third failure mode could be coming to office in a condition where I'm unable to work. So let us take the first one coming late to office as the failure mode for our example. Next column, I will write what are the effects of this failure mode. So what are the effects of coming late? It could be loss of productivity or sometimes it could be reduction in salary too. Assuming that I am productive and assuming that the organization is really concerned about my productivity, coming late is having some severe impact on the organization. So I would give a rating of 8. After that, I will move on to the causes. Here, I will write down all the causes which are leading to my coming late. So these could be traffic. This could be accidents on the road. One of the causes could be habit. Uh, I'm just like that. Oh, so sorry to say that. I'm just like that. I'm habitual of coming late to office. And one more could be waking up late. For each of the causes, I will give occurrence rating, how often this cause occurs. So in the case of traffic, 
yeah 50 percent of the time it is there traffic problems are there so i would rate it as five then accidents on the road well it rarely happens so i'll give a rating of two habit yeah habitually i'm coming late to office so it often happens so i'll give a rating of eight and waking up late oh i wake up late every day so i have given the rating here as 10. next time the next column is about current controls current controls means present controls right now what are you doing to take care of these causes so for traffic i look at the gps for accidents on the road, I listen to the FM radio so I get to know where is the traffic blockage and I can divert and take another route. The next cause was breakdown of the car and what do I do for that? Presently, I have an yearly maintenance schedule of the car and that's pretty well done and that takes care of this particular cause. And habit, what do I do? Oh well, today I don't have any control on that. Waking up late, what are the current controls? Well, I have an alarm clock. Now I am going to rate each of the current controls. And if the control is good, I will rate it as one. If the control is bad, I will rate it as 10. So GPS, well, GPS is, yeah, it is able to take care of this problem. And I'm going to give it a rating of four. Then comes the accidents on the road and FM radio is able to give me good information. So I gave it a rating of say five or six. And to take care of the breakdown of the car, I had yearly maintenance schedule and it's a really, really good control. So I'm going to give it a rating of two. Habit, right now I don't have any control. So no control will always get a rating of 10. Waking up late, I had alarm, but it is of not much use. Alarm keeps ringing, I keep sleeping. That means it should be somewhere around eight. So I've given the ratings for detection. So I have now three ratings, severity, occurrence and detection ratings. I'm going to multiply these three ratings to get my risk priority number, RPN. So if we multiply these numbers, we're getting 160, 96, 32, 640 and 640. So obviously the maximum RPN we have is 640, two times. So we will work on them and we will give some recommended actions. So here we have given a recommended action to take care of the habit. I have got a recommendation that why don't I undergo a soft skills training, some motivational trainings, or why don't I think about my career or the salary. And for waking up late, I can have maybe two or three alarms or maybe better still, I can sleep early and maybe I can tell my spouse to wake me up. Please note down that while we are making recommendations, we can recommend to reduce the detection rating. That means we can suggest a better control or we can even suggest a method of reducing these causes, the occurrence of these causes. Naturally, better would be to reduce the occurrence of these causes. And if that is not possible, then at least we can reduce the detection rating means we can put up a better control so that we are able to at least detect or control the cause. Very rarely you'll find that you would be trying to reduce the severity rating because in this case, you will have to convince the customer about reducing the severity or you may have to mitigate the risk. Sometimes mitigation can help you to reduce the severity rating as well. So that was a day-to-day -day example for FMEA. We have got lots of examples of FMEA done in industries and in services sector, manufacturing sector, healthcare, etc. And these are all available on our portal. You can have a look at them.